This is a mallet. It's a tool that can quickly drive two foot wooden stakes into the frozen tundra. This is also a mallet. It can't drive tent stakes, but if I need to tap some dents out of my truck, this is the tool for the job. This is my workstation PC. It has a 32 core Threadripper CPU and a 4,052 core RTX GPU, 64 gigabytes of memory, and 25 terabytes of storage. It's a few years old, but that's still a massive amount of raw computing power. This is a base model Mac Studio with a 10 core CPU, 24 core GPU, 32 gigabytes of memory, and 512 gigs of storage. My main job on a computer nowadays is video editing. Which one of these tools is better for that job? Let's find out. Hey guys, welcome to Elevated Systems. I'm your host CJ and I recently bought the cheapest Mac Studio and over the course of the next month or so, I'll be running it through its paces and testing its performance in everything from basic video editing to game development and everything in between to ultimately determine if it's gonna replace my $6,000 PC as my primary studio workstation. Be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss the entire series. We're starting today with video editing, which is about 90% of what I do on a PC. Now, I'm not gonna be jumping into Final Cut Pro and doing solely ProRes editing. If you're an FCP editor in the Apple ecosystem, then you really can't do better for the price than Apple Silicon MacBook Pros or Studios. The target audience for this video is the PC person who edits on Premiere Pro or DaVinci Resolve and is thinking about making the switch to Mac or is just Mac curious. I'm a Resolve editor, so we're gonna start there. And admin note, DaVinci Resolve does run natively on Mac Silicon and fully supports the M1 Max SoC. I'm using the latest 17.4.5 update. I'm using multiple clip types in this project. Main cam footage is 6K 30 FPS, Blackmagic Raw, eight to one, constant bit rate. Cam B is 4K, 30 FPS ProRes 422 high quality, and the B roll is a mix of everything from 60 FPS ProRes 422 to 4K H264 and H265, 50 FPS B Raw 8 to 1, no optimized media, and no proxies. I put a lot of variety into this one. I'm editing everything on a 4K 30 FPS timeline or 29.97 FPS to be precise. I started the project like I always do. Set up a simple two cam sync bin on the cut page and started laying in the main cam footage on the timeline with my speed editor. And right away I ran into problems. The playhead kept freezing and as I was scrolling through it, it unfreeze and then I jump ahead on the timeline. There it is, frozen. There, see that? that? It was very annoying and I was getting frustrated because this is exactly how I edit on my PC and this is the fastest part of the editing process. So there was a lot of disappointment and maybe a little cursing here, but I figured the most likely issue was the Mac wasn't able to read the B-RAW file off the USB-C drive fast enough. Now I edit directly off the Wise Advanced one terabyte SSD on my PC with no problems, but in fairness to the Mac, this SSD is formatted in XFAT, so therefore not ideal for use on Mac OS, but I need to be able to use it cross platform. So I picked up a Samsung T7, which I'm using right now to film, formatted in APFS, and it works fine with the large 6K B-RAW file. But for an immediate fix, I just moved the 160 gigabyte B-RAW clip to the Mac's internal drive to finish the edit. And from there, I had no problems. I still had the other B-RAW and ProRes B-Roll footage from my Pocket Cinema 6K Pro on the Wise drive and all the additional footage, the screen cap clips, stock footage, audio clips are on my Samsung T5 SSD. And I was able to quickly chop up and lay down the main cam bass track and then go back and very quickly paint in some B-cam shots over the top, switching to the edit page, I marked in and out all my B-roll footage and appended it to the timeline without problems. I was able to scrub or play through the timeline again with no problems. At most, if I jumped a good distance forward or back, it'd take a handful of frames to get playing smoothly. Once I had the timeline pretty well laid out, I jumped into the fusion tab to add some fusion elements. Things did get a little funky here. The plan was to bring in a pre-built animated callout, edit it to my needs, drop in a tracking node to track the path I wanted the callout pointer to follow. However, the tracking node would just not render out and it actually hard locked resolve like three times. I did get it to track once, but when I tried to add the tracker expression to the callout coordinates, again, hard lock. I resorted to just manually keyframing the callouts same results, just more time consuming. Now, 
we'll see in a bit, but I imported this entire project into my PC. And when I tried the tracker there, it worked fine. It even tracked the footage with two merged cells already in the clip. The track of course took longer, but it worked. I was able to quickly track two points and lock the callout coordinates to the tracking info. I didn't give up on the Mac though. After all was said and done, I did go back and I laid in a fresh fusion clip and for whatever reason, it worked perfectly this time. Trackers tracked, callouts worked. No idea what the problem was the first time. That was the very first fusion element in the timeline. So the system wasn't being bogged down by the fusion smart render, which I actually turned off in the first attempt. In any case, I repeated it multiple times under different conditions and it worked with no notable difference from my PC. The next fusion elements I included were some animated bar graphs. These are fully customizable and I overlaid and edited each one without any issue. Next, I normalized and equalized the audio and I didn't need headphones to isolate from the PC noise. Finally, I color graded the entire sequence. For the main cam, I started with a basic B-Rod or X709 LUT, then I used non-destruct nodes to further refine the lighting and color. And because I really wanted to put a load on the M1 Max's GPU, I added a node with a pretty significant amount of noise reduction. And this grade was applied to the entire main cam sequence. I also individually graded each clip in the rest of the timeline. Even after all this grading, I was still able to play through the timeline pretty smoothly at full resolution, dropping a half resolution, I was no longer dropping frames. Time to output using the H.265 master preset with MP4 format. I always go with H.265 MP4 because it gives me the best quality to file size. QuickTime ProRes output would be more ideal for Mac systems, but the file sizes are just too large for the four to five gigabit upload speeds of the 30 year copper broadband internet in my neighborhood. Anyway, I hit enter and uh oh, render froze at just 1%. I must've pushed the system too hard. So I rebooted and without changing anything, I tried again and it worked, but uh oh, 42 minutes for a 17 minute video. I've never had a resolve render take that long, but I also don't typically use that much noise reduction. So I exported the project, plugged in the SSDs to my PC, imported the project into the PC, relinked the footage. Again, no optimization, no proxies. I rendered with the same settings and uh oh, it failed. For background, I've never had a resolve render fail on me ever. And it turns out the screen cap clips I pulled using OBS on the Mac output in ProRes, well, Resolve on the PC just didn't like those at all. I ended up having to recode those clips in Media Encoder on the Mac, still ProRes, just cleaner, I guess. Then I relinked the new clips and well, after a few attempts to get all of them, it finally rendered out, but it took almost five minutes longer than the Mac. Now, I was legitimately shocked. My experience with the M1 Mac mini was that for simple edits, the system matched the performance of comparably priced PCs. But as soon as you started putting a load on the GPU, it completely bogged down the system. But this render was hugely GPU heavy and the Mac beat the RTX 2080 Ti by almost 12%. Now, the big B-RAW footage was on the Mac internal SSD, and I left it on the WISE SSD for the PC, so I moved it to the internal NVMe and tried again, and it did shave a couple of minutes off the render, but it was still short of the Mac. Again, I'm shocked, but like I said in my last video, a few minutes plus or minus on the final render isn't gonna make or break my decision on which system to use. It's mostly about the timeline responsiveness and overall editing experience, and to be honest, it was better on the Mac. Now on the PC, as soon as I shift D and bypass the color grade, the timeline scrubs and plays pretty smoothly without drop frames at half and even full resolution. But playing through even simple transitions is nearly impossible. Fusion Smart Render takes forever and playing through Fusion Clips at real time is also not really possible. Once the footage is color corrected, timeline interaction and playback to check for lighting abnormalities or chromatic aberration is nearly impossible. Editing the fusion elements takes much longer as I have to wait for the results to render and playing through the sequence at a quarter resolution isn't great for lower resolution overlay effects. Bottom line, everything about DaVinci Resolve was better on the Mac. But what about Premiere Pro? I started by XML exporting my Resolve timeline minus the color grading into Premiere Pro and spent some time readjusting the footage. I had to replace the fusion clips and I just drew in some callouts and manually keyframed them and there was no problem working with text and path tools. 
I replaced the fusion graphs with similar generic graphs from the Adobe library. I just edited the first instance and then replaced each of the fusion graphs with a copy of that one. For color correction, I deleted the noise reduction node from the grading in Resolve and created a LUT, which I was able to apply to a correction layer over my main cam track in Premiere Pro. I made a few more minor tweaks and added a very subtle vignette. For Cam B, I also applied a custom LUT to each of the clips and then manually graded each of the B-roll clips. Even after grading the footage and applying what was a very heavy LUT, scrubbing and playing through the timeline was smooth and responsive, even the very clunky Adobe stock charts played through at half resolution. Now again, I output to H.265 using the 4K UHD preset and without the GPU heavy noise reduction, the render completed in just under 25 minutes. Bringing the project over to my workstation and without making any changes, that render took over 36 and a half minutes, more than a 44% increase in output time. Scrubbing and playing through the timeline was smooth and responsive. Working with text paths and keyframing was fine, but getting into the heavier assets was daunting. To get close to smooth playback of the charts, I had to drop the resolution to a quarter. The final verdict for my workflow is pretty clear. The M1 Mac Studio is the better tool for the job. But my workflow might not be the same as yours, and while the Mac has no problem with 4K or 6K footage on a full HD or 4K timeline, how does it handle 8K footage on 4K and 8K timelines? To find out, I grabbed some more challenging 8K footage. I'll leave links to where I got all these clips below. But first, I dragged them all into a 4K timeline in Premiere, and if we play through each clip, you can see at half resolution, the system really has no issues, even with 100 meg per second H.265 footage. 8K Red Raw was smooth, and of course ProRes even ProRes 444XQ has no problems. If I jumped up to an 8K timeline, you'll have to drop to a quarter resolution, which is actually the same as the 4K timeline at half res, so it responded the same. Let's look at another example in Resolve this time, and I've just stacked the same 8K Red Raw clip into a 4Cam Multicam timeline. I adjusted the colors to distinguish each clip, but a 4 8K Red Raw Multicam timeline is playing through without dropping flames, and if I grab my speed editor, I can quickly start editing the sequence. Now, of course, I'm not doing 8K multicam edits, but just a few months ago, I was just editing 4K and 1080p H.264 footage, and now I've moved up to 6K B-RAW, and my workstation is showing some signs of weakness in that workflow. If in a year I decide to invest in an 8K RED camera, it's helpful to know that this tiny, efficient, and quiet base model machine can handle it easily. Now, I've heard it said that the Mac Studio is a YouTuber machine, which is understandable. YouTubers make videos. We have to edit those videos. For a long time, the computer you used to do it didn't matter because the HD or even 4K footage most were working with could be easily edited on pretty much any computer. But with more advanced cameras like my Pocket Cinema 6K Pro becoming much more attainable for even small creators like me, the editing machine is more important and the price to performance for video editors I don't think the Mac Studio can be beat on the Mac or PC side. But is it just a one trick pony? I mean, maybe it is. So up next, I have a couple of After Effects projects to challenge this Mac Studio with before I move on to some heavy 3D work. So again, be sure to get subscribed to catch all that. And if you missed my initial impressions video, click up here for that and I'll catch you in the next one.